Well, I'd like to tell you about a program called Interface. But before I do so, I want to lay a foundation. I want to tell you a story. And it begins right here in this valley. One of the sons of this valley is Mark Zook. Ten generations ago, in 1742, the Zook family immigrated from Switzerland to this valley. They've been here ever since. But Mark would not remain. After hearing a missionary speaker, Mark, along with his wife Gloria, determined they too would become missionaries. They went for an interview with one mission board. Well, I was 30 years old at that time, with just a high school diploma. And the mission board told me it would take at least four years until I would be able to get a Bible degree. And by that time, I'd be too old and fossilized to learn a tribal language anyway. And some people questioned the wisdom of taking young children and moving to a tropical climate with my health problems. And they said, why not leave them alone? They're happy the way they are. Dejected, but not defeated, Mark and Gloria were finally able to prepare themselves with specialized training for tribal evangelism given by New Tribes Mission. Their home church sent them out. Papua New Guinea, the island that is absolutely unlike anywhere else. A place time has forgotten, isolated. A wonderful corner of creation. From the perpetual spring-like climates in the highlands to the hot, humid, soggy swamps of the lowlands, with its incredible coral reefs and luxurious empty beaches, one wonders why it has not become the tourist attraction of the world. Located in the isolated interior of the island province of West New Britain, the Mulk have lived and died for centuries. It is these people who have become so much a part of the Zook's lives. Often the perception of what is involved in missionary work is wrong. You don't just start preaching the Bible the first day you walk in. If you do, you'll have massive problems and you'll probably be the last to know about it. Rather, you need to embark upon the adventure of learning. Learning how these people think, how they talk. What makes them tick? The question is, where do you begin? What do you do the first day, the second day, the third day? What's this you want to show me? Your slings? When you move into a tribe, those things you learn first are the most obvious where they live, what they eat, and how they prepare it. And of course, where they get their food. The Mok love to eat wild pig, which they capture in nets that they string throughout the jungle. The day of the hunt, everybody gets up real early and everyone gets involved.
so obvious is how they view life. Happy-go-lucky on the outside does not mean life without fear on the inside. It takes determined study to know them, and often the grim facts are not pleasant. As we studied their way of life and how they thought, one of the things that stood out was the constant fear and deception the people lived in. One area involved their dead ancestors. The men would dress up in a large mask and dance around the village. They believed that this was the spirit of a dead ancestor returned. The men told us that the women did not know that it was them who wore the mask. They kept the mask hid in a special place reserved only for men. They explained to us that if a woman ever saw the mask by itself, or if she let on she knew about the mask, and that it was only a man who wore it and not a spirit, for that woman, the penalty was death. When I was a little boy, my mother saw the mask by itself, as was custom my very powerful father asked my mother to die when he died. When my father died, my mother was shown the mask. Her two brothers took her to the woods. They did not want to, but they had to. Our beliefs demanded it. They put a bark rope around her neck. I was very young, but I remember it well. My mother was young. I loved her. died because she saw the mask by itself. We lived in fear. Time goes by the day, the night, and they don't know. Children cry, men live, they die, and they have no hope. So many people just existing are we listening to the tears and the fears of the unknown oh, killing to live and living to kill yet dying in their sin their faiths are strong but they're all wrong their gods just can't win they tremble at the thought of them the sun, the moon, the birds, the spirits Oh, how can it be that they just don't know He is willing that none should perish He desires each one as his own He said his birth Son to die for them. The son now reigns next to his father's throne, but so many just don't know. The day does come, though, when you do know enough of their language and how they think to explain to them the word of God. Now the question is. Where do you start? The Bible is a big book, and none of these Moke tribal people had any previous exposure to God's Word. Before we could start teaching, we had to prepare Bible lessons. Our tribal language helper, who was not a believer at that time, was the key to getting the proper Bible terminology we needed. Even before we started to teach, the Mok seemed to sense a wonderful message was coming. When the teaching finally started, the entire village of 310 people gathered. We never mentioned Jesus Christ until after two months of teaching Old Testament foundational stories. The first day, we began by showing them a map of their village. Then we showed them where the surrounding Mok villages were located on that map. From this point, we explained to them progressively 
where they were located in relationship to the neighboring tribal groups, where in the province they were located, where the province was located in the country of Papua New Guinea, and where Papua New Guinea was in relationship to Australia, Japan, United States, and Israel. Then we explained how the Bible, God's talk, many years ago had come from Israel to Europe and then around the world and was now coming to them, the Mok people.